it's my great pleasure to talk to Chris Landruff, uh, Oscar-winning animator. And uh, thanks a lot, uh, Chris, for doing this with me. Sure, my pleasure. So, Chris, uh, can you uh, talk a little bit about how did you come out with the, the story idea? Like, is it uh, from friends and family you see, or like, or is it even personal? It's all of those things. It really is. It's, uh, it's friends and family, it's personal, and it's, uh, it involves a lot of strangers, too. Uh, that is, uh, people who I have happened to see over the years, people who are in uh, relationships that are, uh, that are mind-boggling, uh, relationships in which you walk away wondering like, how they could be, still be together after you know, 25 or 30 you know, decades of, of, of being together in marriages and unions. Um, when you see such unhealthiness and such toxicity, um, uh, that's always been kind of a riddle for me, uh, and yet people stay in these relationships. And um, what I do in the, the the spine is to show that sometimes there is a very good reason why, even though that may be strange and perverse and uh, 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 just may defy common sense. Right. Yeah, right. And yeah. And watching and watching, uh, watching the film and uh, especially uh, the conclusion, it was like, wow, it's, it's it all makes sense. All right, good. Yeah. So, can you talk a little bit about uh, explain a little bit about that site? What do you you uh, what does psychorealism mean to you uh, personally, and how did how did you apply it in the spine? Um, well, I mean, I used that term or used that term psychorealism when I was uh, developing uh, the film Ryan, and uh, yeah, there's a lot of that kind of thing happening in the spine. Clearly, I mean, you know, like he. Midway through the film, uh, the protagonist Dan, you know, grows the spine, mm -hmm. and that, uh, I mean, what that, what that, you know, means. Uh, there's a, a significance to that. It's not just literal. It's uh, metaphorical. That he's got something going on in his psychology and his emotional state and his uh, and his in his intellectual state. That, that suddenly um, he's. Uh, becomes more aware. He becomes a stronger person. He becomes curious about the world where he wasn't before. Um, I love the idea of being able to show those things in a visual way, in a way that's metaphorical. I think that when you start doing things like you see in The Spine or in Ryan, you start tapping into a way of telling people's stories in a, in a, in a way that's emotional, um, that uh, has a little bizarreness to it, obviously, but that that bizarreness uh, uh, comes to mean something. Hopefully, you know, when people see the film, they'll see that 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 uh, that bizarreness isn't because I'm trying to show these characters as being strange or anything different than you or me. Mm -hmm. That uh, yeah. these things are about. I mean, like Dan and Mary are in a way very ordinary people. Very, their problems are very common ones, and what I try to do with the visuals and the story is to make those problems that are otherwise common seem very extraordinary and, and, and as powerful as they really are in real life. Mm. Kind of bringing out the problem from deep down to the surface and then asking the audience to actually look past the surface and to look deep down and, and, and into the characters, I guess. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there, there are three questions or three things that seems to be quite uh, related uh, to me. Um, so can you talk about, uh, and uh, I'll throw all three out to you, and then uh, you, can, uh, you can answer in uh, ways you like. So how does the spine avoid the uncanny valley, uh, is the first one. And uh, your animators, uh, they use uh, method acting, the, the method acting approach to, I guess, to deal with some of the issues. And uh, finally, the third one is balancing realism and uh, stylization. Like the, the three seems to be all linked in, into the storytelling and a bit of the technology. Can you comment on that? Wow, that's a big one. I'll try to do. Um, yeah, the Uncanny Valley uh, is this, I mean, it's this phenomena that, uh, that uh, uh, just if, for your readers uh, who don't know about it, it's that phenomenon which the more realistic a character gets, the more believable and uh, the more into the story that you get. But when the character gets too realistic without actually being a real person, then the opposite effect happens. Uh, they start to appear creepy and, and the audience by and large starts to lose 
the story and the uh, the emotions and uh, uh, the drama or the comedy or whatever that's in that's in the story. Um, and there are some, uh, I mean, that's happened before. In fact, some of my films sort of go into that uncanny valley. Um, and you know, I think that what happens with that uh, phenomena is that when you make characters too realistic, uh, the audience starts feeling like they're being fooled, like they're they're mm -hmm. being told to think of these characters as real live actors when there's something slightly wrong with them, which there invariably is, um, and then you start feeling creeped out. With uh, my film, uh, The Spine, um, the characters are very realistic. I put a lot of detail into the, you know, the skin textures and, um, and into the way that they, they move and they act, and that's what, uh, like, as you were saying about the audience uh, or the animators doing uh, method acting type stuff in order to make that happen. Their motions and their appearances in some ways are very, very realistic. But what I don't, I do things like I try to stylize the characters and obviously I put in those bizarre psycho-realistic things. Um, so what I hope is happening with that is that uh, the audience doesn't feel like they're being fooled into thinking that these are real characters. Um, so I try to stay on, you know, just this side of the uncanny valley. Um, right. And, uh, you know, with that detail, there's, I, I hope people identify with the characters as being realistic, but with the stylization and with the really bizarre things that I do there, they know on every level that they know uh, that these are not, you know, real characters. So there's uh, this cameo by a Canadian politician. So uh, oh. <laughs> any story right. to tell on that? Right, yes, the, the Canadians know about it, yes. Right. <laughs> Any other yeah. story on that? Um, that, was, that was a complete just brain fart right there. Oh, you know, okay. that <laughs> when I was writing the script, some, somehow, uh, somehow Brian Mulroney made his way into the script. Right. And uh, right. yeah, so, you know, there's that picture of Dan and Mary posing with him at some, you know, campaign event or oh, I see. something. <laughs> that was cute. Was that? Hey, that I know that guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Canadian audiences uh, really they they applaud when they clap and laugh when they see that part. Nobody else does. <laughs> right, yeah. It's yeah, it's a, it, it's a good way to tell Canadians uh, apart from in the exactly. audience.